the Son, and the Holy Spirit. St. Paisios, the new Matatos, in the latest volume they have out about in the fifth volume of this current series, is, as always, uses very down-to-earth expressions and contemporary expressions to uh, talk about the spiritual life. One of the one, many ones that I heard in this particular book that I like was, he says that the bank of God offers great interest rates. But if we don't make a deposit to the bank of God, how can we expect to make a withdrawal? It's a good point. God offers us much, much more back for what we offer to Him. But yet if we don't sacrifice our lives to Him, give part of our life to Him, really everything that we have to Him, how can we expect to receive the interest. I could expect to make that withdrawal even of what we even put in because it wasn't ours to begin with, it was God's. In the gospel today, the Lord also uses action words of sacrifice and things that we must do and offer ourselves unto God. Of course, he says, bring him here to me. Bring. We, throughout the scriptures we hear, come unto me, take, drink. Take up your cross, follow me. He tells Moses to depart from this land and go there. He tells Abraham to depart and go here. Action words, over and over. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Go unto them. Go unto all nations. Things he wants us to be doing, to feed, to give those to drink, to clothe, to do things. But this man comes to him in this particular past. We've been, of course, inundated in the last few weeks. Last week, of course, with... Uh, the Lord walking across the waters and the, the 5,000, with the Lord attempting to increase our faith and show us the uh, real need, but yet the hope and trusting in Him. And this man comes whose own child has serious problems. And we all know, those of us who have children, or even those that don't, but love children around us, how painful it is to see one of our children suffering. This man's son was possessed by a demon. Imagine the pain that would cause us. We felt helpless over it. So he goes to the Lord frantic, of course, after having gone to the apostles. And he says, my son is a lunatic. Now, it might be important to understand that word. We kind of use it flippantly in our society. But that meant something to these people. It had something to do with the moon. And the demon convinced the man, because he was only attacked the sun, really, at the time of the month when there was a full moon, that it was the moon that was causing his problems, God's creation. It wasn't a lunatic. It was a demon. Making the people think such false and superstitious things. But the man said he had gone to the disciples first, and they couldn't heal him. Of course, he doesn't take any responsibility for his own lack of faith. The Lord says, faithless generation here. But he rebukes the man very clearly for his lack of unbelief. Because the man very publicly accused the apostles of not being able to do this and rebuked them. See, basically he was put in his place. But to increase this man's faith, he says, bring him to me. He casts out the demon. And the child is healed. Imagine the elation, imagine the joy the man must have felt at this point. The humility and really being put in his place for his lack of faith. But yet now the ability to have faith and trust. Because he has seen. We have seen. And then he goes on to the apostles. <coughs> takes them aside and they ask, why could we not cast out this demon? He doesn't rebuke them publicly because they weren't really sinning publicly. Very quietly tells them, because of your unbelief, he who has faith, which is a, you know, a grain, mustard seed, can say to this mountain be removed and cast into the sea, and it shall be done. Now, not many people are moving mountains that I'm aware of. There have been examples in the history of the church. There's actually a few. Primarily for us, moving a mountain would be moving pride out of our life, moving the devil out of our life, conquering our passions. That's moving a mountain for us, a great thing. 
came to mind reading that story, that famous story of St. Mark of Thrace, or Athens, if you like, who, living in the desert, no one had seen him, I believe it was 80 years, perhaps, living out in the desert. No one knew he existed. But Abba Serapion found him out in the desert and began to converse with him the same day he dies, discovers this man. And Abba uh, Mark asks him, are those in the world, he's asking me many things about the world, but he asks, are people still able to move mountains in the world? And of course, Abba Serapion is shocked by this statement. He doesn't know anybody moving mountains, but he says that the mountain begins to move and moves quite a distance under Abba Mark's feet. And Abba Mark, realizing what's happened, looks down at it and said, Did I tell you to move? Move back. And it does so. That's faith. There have been saints in the history of the church who could do these things. And we need to be tremendously humbled by them. But the Lord tells these men that this can only come out by prayer and fasting. Those are actions of faith. Those are bring, come, go, drink, take, clothe words. Doing, showing our faith through our works and our lives. One has to have faith to truly fast. One has to have faith to truly pray. Abba Mark did. The apostles eventually did. We can too. But to fast, we have to believe that there's some point in this. Otherwise, it's just a good diet. To fast, we need to believe that there's a point in this, that God can feed me. As he fed the Hebrews in the wilderness. As he fed the saints, he will feed me too. I don't need to worry about skipping a meal or two, or the quote quality of meals, which often the quality that we call quality is bad for us. More rich foods cause us more pain. We have to trust that God can work through this too. In fact, and with the prayer, of course, there's real no point in praying if we don't believe what's going to happen is going to happen. We're just uttering mantras or empty words. The words have meaning. Our prayers are the greatest gift we have to offer to the world. Our prayers are powerful to the healing of the world, the healing of each and every one of us, to changing lives, to casting out demons. So we have to believe with humility and prayer and fasting. The apostles eventually learned to do this. So we can't really think that if we sort of haphazardly follow what the church says about prayer or self-will following it without following it, if we don't pray just occasionally, well, I didn't say prayer was sung this week, or I didn't pray last week. These are options for us as Christians. Do we want to be united to the Son of the living God or not? We should do what he says and follow his commandments. And everything that we do, the prayer, the fasting, casting out of demons, all have only one meaning, and that is Christ. They don't have Christ as a meaning of worthless. But why would we not want to do these things? These aren't things that the church sets over us to torture us or to control us. These are things that have been given to her by Him and by the Holy Spirit. And we see a Lord who feeds 5,000 who are out in a desert place, who walks upon waters and calm seas and brings Peter up to himself when he is perishing, who casts out this demon, who heals a woman with an issue of blood, who raises the dead, who heals the blind, who cleanses lepers, who forgives sins. The elation of these apostles and this man must have been beyond anything we can imagine. Because the love of the Lord was abounding throughout the universe. And with a Lord like that, who is the God that we serve, along with Joshua, that's for me and my house, I will serve the Lord, we will follow the Lord, we too should do these things. Not because they are burdens, but because they are actions of great joy in offering ourselves to the one who first loved us, 
who became incarnate for us, was crucified for us, has risen for us, has ascended for us, has sent down His Holy Spirit, and continues in each and every moment and second of life to offer Himself to us and to operate with His grace throughout the entire universe. He says, bring Him to me. Bring our problems to Him. Bring ourselves to Him. Let Him cast out those demons. Deny yourselves and do what He says, and He will fill up your lives with every good thing. Learn from His lesson. Learn from the lesson of St. Mark of Thrace. Learn from Elder Paisios, who tells us that if we want to make withdrawals from this great interest, we have to make deposits ourselves. We cast out the old man, as Elder Paisios says, to cast out the bad tenant, tenant, we must evict him. Those are action words. May God give us the strength to change our lives from this very moment, to be filled with his love and mercy, because that's exactly what everything in the spiritual life is, is abounding with God's love. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. Amen.